Hello, it's Bud. Today we're going to talk about making a complex pattern. In the past, we've talked about using uh, designer and pattern editor to make simple patterns. Uh, we've talked about how to edit those patterns with uh, editor that comes along with the probe. Uh, or you can buy by itself, but it's uh, more economical to get the probe at the same time. Uh, but today we're going to deal with several patterns, uh, several items, and make them into one complete pattern. Um, and we'll talk about why we're doing each thing. Uh, we're going to use the probe to begin with uh, and go from there. So just a minute. Okay, here's a wreath that has been in our family for oh, probably 50 years or better. Um, I'm going to scan this uh, and we're going to use it. As you can see, it's on a, on a ivory type wall and you can see there's a hole in the pattern where this guy would be. Uh, so what I'm going to do is raise this wreath up uh, and go beyond the outer edges of the wreath, of the wreath and um, essentially get that hole at the same time. Um, so that's our goal is to start with this. Um, I might say that any pattern you make and intend to sell should be entirely yours. Uh, not something that you've borrowed from someone else. you got to be careful of the copyrights and everything else. I'll be back. Okay, I've completed the scan and I've imported that scan into Designer Pattern Editor and accepted the pattern. And we're going to go from there. I've got to go get it. And it's a Christmas thing, so I'm going to go get it. And here it is. And I'm going to bring it into my board. Now the first thing I see is I have a problem in that the hole in the center is actually higher than the people. The people have the right contour to them but everything is popping out uh, even if I get rid of the feather I still have the problem in that the sky is higher than the people uh, I can try to invert this but then my people are backward uh, if I was going to use this as a uh, jello mold or a uh, a butter mold, uh, it would be fine, but that's not what I'm doing, so I don't want it inverted. Uh, plus, I've got a, uh, another situation I want to deal with as well. So what I want to do is go back to the pattern. Let me get rid of this to start with. Go back to the pattern and double click and bring it into Pattern Editor. And here, if I try to color this, um, that can get a little sticky. I can do it, but I have a problem with that. So I'm not going to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is come back into it. And this is just my way. Uh, it's not the only way. Just so you see the whole thing. Um, okay, I've got the pattern highlighted. The original pattern from the scanner. Um, 
I'm going to click on Outline, and I get an outline. Now I'm not interested in the outer outline, so I'm going to delete that path. And that, that leads me to two inner outlines. And I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so what I'm going to do is highlight the two inner paths. I've got the one highlighted. I'm going to hold control and highlight the other one. I'm going to do a carve region. And I'm going to make it 0.75 which is 750 on the depth. And hit enter. <coughs> okay, so there I have it. If I clip on the other side, that's what I wanted. As it goes all the way through, this pattern uh, has an actual depth of 800. Uh, <coughs> I'll probably change it to 750 as well. And I can make my height whatever I want. Okay. Don't think that it has any effect on anything else. Okay, so now I've actually used these two outlines, made carved regions, and they become patterns. Okay. Uh, let's do something else just to show the power or whatever. I'm going to put a moon in here. I'm going to make it a carved region. I'm going to make it like a uh, point 0.7 because I don't want it to go quite as deep. <coughs> but rather than hanging it out in space, I'm going to allow it to be attached to something like behind this tree. Okay. And let's uh, select a texture and I'm going to use the uh, checkering. And I'm going to really reduce the interval. I'm going to make a point zero zero five. And that's parts of an inch, okay? And click OK. So now you can see it's got a little bit of a shading to it. I made a buggy that same way. Uh, Amish buggy and I wanted to show that it was textured so that's what I did. So now I have a moon, I have my original reed and I have the pattern with the hole where the sky would be uh, depending on the depth that I use. Um, I can go all the way through the board uh, if I want. Okay. So the next step is to highlight everything, hold down control and click everything, click group, and so far make pattern is not active. Okay, but I'm going to hold down control again and click on group, and the make pattern appears. Okay, so I click make pattern, and give this thing a name, a sample pattern. Okay, and it's just under favorites. And click save. <coughs> okay, so now I'm going to throw all this away. Go to pattern, library, Go to favorites. I'm just going to run down here. Here's my A sample. Uh, the black appears to be in the wrong place. Let's see.
Yeah, it looks okay there. Nope. See, the background is up again. Okay. So I'll throw that away. I'm going to double click on my A sample. And this is just something that can happen, I guess. Um, I'm going to move this and be right back. So you can see what's going on here. Let's get out of it here. Right here. Now, do the A sample again, see if it gets it where I want it to be. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to come up to filter and you can see that uh, the blues are the highest things. The lighter color is the lowest thing. So I'm going to invert it. Okay. And now I'm going back to File. Save to the Pattern Library. Go to Favorites. And I want to find a sample pattern. Save and replace. And I'm going to get out of this. I don't need to save it. Uh, favorites. A sample. Now the blacks in the sky. And there we see that it's almost through the board because my board is three quarters. Uh, actually, if I set on this, uh, it's a 7.9 in the depth. If I hit a pierce, we can see that it goes away and then I can unpierce it and it stays to where it appears it's going all the way through the board. Whether I use pierce or not, it's up to me uh, as I do my thing. But that is how I've taken a, a scanned wreath and dealt with this inner anomaly that I had of the sky being higher, even though it was low on the scan. And, and you can see that the, uh, the people profile is correct. That's what we wanted. You see the moons behind the tree. So I actually had one pattern for the wreath of the people. I had another pattern to make the sky deep. And then I included a pattern of a circle with a texture to give me my moon. And that is how I can make a complex pattern out of several patterns that I own and can deal with it from there any way I want. I hope you enjoyed the lesson.